Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We are working on the companion project to Come One Come All, which is going to be a six and a quarter by six and a quarter mini album. The pocket pages themselves will be six by six, but the album cover will be six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So um, we're going to get started by joining two eight and a half by 11 sheets. Um, the paper I like to use is Nina Astro Bright, and this is Eclipse Black. We carry it in our shop, but it's also a paper that you can find at Walmart, and you won't find it in the craft section. It's in the office section, um, although I have to say it's been getting harder and harder to locate. Okay, we're going to um, attach these two end to end. I'm going to use my grid here to get a reasonably straight line. And uh, I think it's papers just getting hard to find everywhere, not just not just craft paper, but all paper. Okay, there we go. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding these panels. Um, I've already added tape on the back. I'd like to go all the way around the perimeter and add three. And then you're going to want actually you're going to want to add tape again. Um, around the edges and then uh, a piece in the middle. So here is, I'm just gonna butt this right up to the seam. This is where I've joined the two pieces of paper. You wanna make sure that that join does not wind up between two pieces of chipboard. So I'm going to center my spine off that. But first, I'm going to put a guideline on the bottom at one inch. So I'm gonna use my ruler and draw a one inch guideline that will help me put my paper, my uh, chipboard in straight. Okay, so I'm going to add the spine and then I'm going to measure these two off of it. I'm using um, graphic. Uh, graphics, sorry, medium weight chipboard. Which is pretty sturdy. Okay, just using my pencil line here. And I'm putting the join roughly in the middle of my spine. Okay, now regardless of what chipboard you're using, you're going to need uh, a jig for your spacing. And um, you're going to need to take two layers of whatever chipboard you're using. So this is two pieces of scrap glued together and that's going to become the spacer. Now ideally the spacer will run the length of what you're doing so that <clears throat> you can avoid this where you've got a nice space at the bottom but it starts to come in at the top because your chipboard doesn't go all the way. So this one is long enough to go all the way. I'm gonna leave a little gap at the bottom so I can make sure this is lined up right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off and we're gonna lay one of these down. <clears throat> I broke my rule. I usually go top to bottom so that I'm not dragging my hand over the tape. Okay, now put your spacer in, down. You're going to put this at an angle so the tape is not touching your cardstock until you're ready. Now I'm bringing it down and looking for a very straight line here. And if you've got a ruler that you can put on the bottom that you can press it into, all the better. Press hard onto your spacer. It should stand on its own. Then you know they need got equal pressure all the way across. Okay, we're gonna do that again on the other side. Here we go. Okay, 
get my spacer. Get my T square, make sure I'm all lined up. There we go. All right, so that's looking good. So now we've got a little excess on either end, so I'm going to trim that off real quick. And I'm just going to use um, a box cutter. And that just keeps the bulk out of the center. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, well, let's go ahead and flip it over and burnish this a little bit. Make sure all the tape is everywhere. So now we're going to need to miter our corners. So I use my tape tear tool to do that. The, the depth of the acrylic is an eighth of an inch. And that's what you're going to need to make sure that the chipboard is completely covered when you wrap it. I'm doing that backwards. Uh, so any, any means that you have to get one eighth inch mark out. So that's what it's going to look like roughly. Now if you are new to this, um, Give yourself a little more room. You can always trim more off later. You cannot add the paper back on, and it's 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 disturbing to see a little piece of chipboard sticking out. Worst case, you go back over it, cover it with either another piece of cardstock or you use a black pen to darken the chipboard. But ideally, you don't cut short in the first place. Okay, you can use your um, box cutter or scissors to trim these off at a miter. I'm going to use my scissors. I'm going to cut uh, on the outside of the line I drew, outside away from the chipboard. <clears throat> okay, do a little housekeeping. Now it's time to start working the paper so that it'll come around the edge smoothly. You're going to notice that one side wants to fold over beautifully and the other side's going to give you a little bit more trouble. And that's because one side's going to be with the grain and one's going to be against the grain. You just have to work a little harder on that side. Okay, so I'm gonna go around with my score tool all the way around, then I'm gonna get under it and go around again. So all of this is just starting to train the paper so it's gonna do what we want it to do after we get our tape on. <clears throat> and I'm pressing this into the chipboard. We're getting a nice clean fold here. Okay, now we're gonna do the ends. Okay, now we're ready to add our tape. We're going to outline the chipboard. And then we're going to go and add uh, tape all the way around on the cardstock. tape that I'm using is 3 8 of an inch and it's it's a really universal size. I use either 3 8 or 5 8 and the reason I'm so um, happy with the 3 8 is because when you build a half inch um, uh, flap or hinge um, it fits on there and a half inch is actually a little bit too big because the score line itself takes up part of the half inch.
I don't think I mentioned it, but the tape tear tool is uh, available in our store if you're interested in purchasing one. I can't live without it. I used to pick up my scissors and cut my tape and I get them stuck on my arthritic joints. So this has been it really helps speed things up, but it also saves me picking up those scissors and fighting with them. Okay, we're going to burnish everything and then we're going to start wrapping. Now, because when we wrap this way, even when we open and close the book, it's really not changing the up and down motion. Left and right is going to change because of this spacing here. So I do my top and bottom first, and then I do my left and right last. So we're going to burnish this down. Just burnishing helps make sure that the, the tape is secure to the cardstock and the chipboard for easy removal of its backing. Otherwise, if it's not burnished at all, what will happen is you go to pick up the backing and it wants to pick up the tape also. Okay. So as we approach this, we want to fold it over and you've got tape up here. So when we fold it over, it's gonna reach past the layer of tape that we placed. We wanna fold from the center out in case there's any excess paper. We want it to go away from the spine. The spine is also going to hold the hinge for the book which the pages will be attached to. So we want this to be a flat consistent surface. Okay, So up and out, up and out. Okay, looking good. Okay, we we'll repeat that process and then we'll work on left and right ends. Okay, center out. to trim the corners so that you get a beautiful miter. So we're going to take this edge and you can see there's a little piece right here. We're going to flatten that as much as we can by pushing it down and in. So basically what's happening is the paper is coming up and over the chipboard. Okay, we're going to do that on both sides. So down and in, down and in. And when we fold this up, I'm going to bring it up and show it to you. When you bring this up, you can see how there's some excess right there, right? We're going to take our scissors. We're going to pinch down the side right here so you can see there's a little gusset, and that's the height of the chipboard. We're going to take our scissors. We're going to lay it in the corner, and it's going to come to rest on the chipboard, and you're going to trim away from the corner and you're gonna get a beautiful, perfect miter every time. Rest it on the chipboard and trim, trim away. And look at that beautiful miter. Isn't that perfect? So that's how you get a perfect miter every time. Do not cut towards a quarter. Always go from the corner toward the center. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna press down and in. So it's coming up and around the chipboard. And that's how we know when we come up for the miter that the corner of the chipboard is going to be covered. Okay, I'm going to bring this up so you can see. Hopefully you can see how I pressed this down and in, down and in. Okay, I'm going to remove the tape. I'm going to take a look and you can see there's a little bit of a lip. So I'm going to rest my scissors, trim away, doesn't matter, this is all going to get covered. Rest the scissors on the chipboard, 
that away, and we're going to wind up with two perfect miters, okay? And why do we care? Well, because all that excess paper builds up on the corners, and it just makes the corners look a little bit bulky. So we want to have as little paper in there as possible, but make sure that the chipboard is covered. So we're trying to accomplish both of those things. Okay, same thing, you always start from the center and work out. We're gonna burnish everything in place. There we go. When we come back, we will install the, um, the hinge. And uh, following that, we will um, add our taped, uh, our book binding tape, which will reinforce the hinge into the book, but also reinforce the spine to the covers. And then the last thing we'll do is um, make our actual pocket page, which are going to be the pages that we attach. Okay. All right. So there we are, six and a quarter by six and a quarter by two and a half inch mini album. We'll come back and do the rest of this shortly. Okay, we're ready to make the hinge. So what you're going to need to start with is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Then you're gonna cut it down to five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths by 11. Okay, then we're gonna start scoring to make our hinges. Now I like to score from the center out and then I have an even piece of paper on either side to apply to the book. Um, so if it's 11 inches, five and a half is the center, and we know we're doing half inch gussets, so I'm gonna start at five and a quarter, and then five and three quarters, and that's gonna be my first gusset. That's gonna be the center of the hinge. Now I'm gonna move away from the center a half inch at a time. So four and three quarters, four and a quarter. Oops, that skipped four and a quarter. Three and three quarters, three and a quarter, two and three quarters, two and a quarter, six and a quarter, six and three quarters, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarters, eight and a quarter, and I think I end up, and eight and three quarters. Okay. So, if you were counting and keeping track, we have one extra score line on either side. When we're finished um, constructing this, these score lines should match up to the score line where the hinges meet. Okay. So the first one is going to be like that. And then this is going... to be our first hinge. And I guess we can work from the side. So this is the part that's going to be on the cover. You're going to skip this because it's going to be a space. Then you're going to pinch it and that's going to be a mountain. This is going to become a lot clearer in just a moment. Okay, and that's our first hinge. Okay, from this point on we're going to skip that, pinch this, And that is our second hinge. Okay. We're going to do this two more times. Skip this, pinch this. And I'm going to burnish all this a little bit later. Skip this, pinch this. There we go. So now we've got four mountains and a total of five gussets, the two outsides and the three insides. So when we go to put this in the book, and these are all lined up, these last score lines are going to help you place it into the book. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to tape these mountains together. So we're going to put a piece of tape here. Okay, 
in here. In, in between each one of these. Okay, so we should have four, paper, uh, four strips of tape. Okay, now I'm gonna fold this over. And now I have a permanent hinge, okay? I'm gonna burnish it all into place. Now we're gonna do this, fold it over. And now we have two hinges, okay? I'm gonna keep going, two more. And then now we're on our last one. This is called the hidden hinge system and there's tons of tutorials. If there's anything here that's not clear to you, lots and lots of tutorials that you can look at. But hopefully I'm uh, doing a good enough job that you can follow along. Now we're just gonna burnish everything in place. Make it nice and crisp. And the next thing is we're gonna put tape on both sides of this. So our pocket pages are gonna slide right over it and the tape is what's gonna hold it in place. I'm using 3 8 inch tape and I wanna go as close to the top of the hinge as possible so that it doesn't get caught in the um, score area. So I'm going to do all one side, then I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. <clears throat> the hinge, um, you use the most amount of tape on the hinge. It's, the, it's a pretty important piece. It's what's going to hold um, all your pages into your book. So it's not a place you really want to economize. Okay, I'll flip it over, do the same thing on the reverse side. Next thing is we are going to put tape all across the back. So the other thing I like to do is I like to measure from here to here and here to here and make sure that I've got um, a nice rectangle. And it should work out, but sometimes because of your score lines, it might be a little smaller on one end than the other, and you can just stretch it a little bit until it's perfect. And that way it's easier, it, it'll go into your book straighter. Okay, and I also like to part at the center. Now we're gonna add our tape on the back. Now here I'm using 5 8 inch, it's just thicker. Um, it'll go quicker. If you don't have 5 8 just use your 3 8 But you're gonna cover this whole thing in tape. Um, and this is the anchor to the book, so it's really important not to skimp on your tape here. Now, as a rule of thumb, I use tape on interactive components that are moving about, like the spine and the hinges. And then if it's a static piece, like a designer um, piece of paper on a flat panel, I use glue. 
So interactive, use tape. Um, static, use glue. Um, glue is more economical. It's also a lot faster. You can use tape everywhere, but it's expensive. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and finish the rest. And there we go. Oh, that's too thick, so I'm going to go to a size down so I don't have to trim the tape off the outside. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're going to burnish all this and then we're going to install it into uh, the cover. So burnishing, I think I mentioned this, but I'll mention it again. Just make sure that it helps adhere the tape to the cardstock so that when you go to pull the backing off, the tape doesn't come with it. Okay, so it just means you've got a nice big seal on there. Um, as a rule of thumb, I go from the top down so I'm not dragging my hand across the tape. Now, if you're uncomfortable with this, something that you can do is take off a few strips in the center, line it up, get it where you feel comfortable. In fact, I'll do that. We'll do it together. Let's just do it. Let me cover this back up. And we'll take... Uh, I'll take a couple of the center pieces off. Okay, I'm gonna take these two out. So the book is six and a quarter, plus a little bit more because we wrapped it, and the hinge is five and seven eighths because we're gonna put a six inch pocket page on it. So you're gonna have a gap on the top and the bottom. So what you're looking for is an even gap top to bottom, and then we've got the score line here, and then we also have the flange of the um, uh, hinge. We're trying to line that up with the mark or the, um, the score lines that meet between the spine and the cover. So that's what we're trying to do. By having just these removed, if we make a mistake, it's much easier to pick it, pick it back up and realign it. I'm going to trim this off. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. That's the one I just added. So I like to stand over it. I get a better visual. Okay, I'm going to press down on this side first. Then I'm going to come up, lay, my, lay everything down. It looks... Pretty good, maybe. I like that better. There, that's it. Now we're gonna press the center down firmly, then we're gonna lift it up, use our hook tool, take the tape off the rest and just place it in, just let it fall into place and press it, burnish it. So as you can see, you don't have to worry so much if you make a mistake. You're not trying to lift it off the whole book. You've just got one line of tape that you're dealing with. Okay. Let me get the rest of the tape off. So once I finish this, we are going to burnish everything into place. And then I'm going to show you how to apply the book binding tape around the um, the hinge area of the spine and the cover and to reinforce it, to further anchor it into the book, but to also reinforce um, the hinge for the uh, cover so that it won't crack. It gets a lot of wear and tear. Okay. There we go. It's looking good. So we're also looking to see that it's, you know, even top to bottom. Okay. So you're going to take your bone folder and work it into the groove here on both sides. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do is add the book binding tape. So I'll be right back and we'll go through that process. 
Okay, now that we have this um, wrapped and ready to go, doesn't it look beautiful? It's so cute and small. Um, we are gonna go ahead and in, install the spine. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how to use the book binding tape to reinforce um, the hinge in the book as well as um, prevent any cracking uh, from the use opening and closing the book. <clears throat> okay, you can do some measurements. I typically eyeball it just because I'm used to doing it. If you lay both of your, I should have done this earlier, but if you lay um, your hinges down two to the left and two to the right, the edge of this should line up with your scores for your front and back cover. So instead of trying to look at the whole thing, I'm looking at trying to line up these corners with these lines and then looking up and down. And I generally have to stand up so I can get a better view of that and bring it a little bit closer. So again, try to get these to lay as flat as possible and you're looking at lining them up with the score line of the front and back cover, and then trying to make sure it's not twisted. So you're doing it from the top to the bottom. As so I'm not gonna press it into place, I'm setting it here gently. Get my fingers out from under. And then I'm pressing that down, and that looks good, so I'm gonna press it all into place. And the next thing we wanna do is score this line. Then we're gonna come back through with that um, book binding tape, and I'll show you how to apply that. So the reason I like to use a full sheet of paper, score the hinges from the center out, is you wind up with this tail that gets applied to um, the left and right-hand side, um, of the book. This further secures and anchors your hinge into the book so that it's not just attached to the spine but it's also attached to the front and back cover. Okay, work this in gently. Don't get too aggressive. There's a lot going on here. At least on the top and bottom you're going through two layers of cardstock. Okay, you don't want to puncture, puncture it. The next, although if you do it's it's recoverable because we're going to apply this book binding tape. So this tape is going to wrap around from the center all the way around the outside to the front. And the way that I do it is I take my measuring tape. I'm going to wrap it around and get my measurement. I want to be as precise as possible because ideally I want the tape to come around and meet um, and maybe overlap, but not have a gap. So it looks like 12. And a half, five eighths. I'm gonna do 12 and just shy of three quarters. And I'm gonna lay it on my, my board here. And we're gonna do one for each side. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to cut it right here. There's my twelve and three quarters. Be careful not to let it fold on itself because you can't you can't release it. You'll have to cut it and start over again. So I'm gonna place this as close to the hinge as I can get. Lay it in. 
then I'm going to pick up the book, come wrap it around, do the same thing, come as close to the hinge as I can, bring it down, and you can see there's a little gap and that's fine. Now remember we're going to have designer paper here. You can see a little bit of the string, so what I like to do is hit that with some black ink. You might see a little of it, but not much. I'm going to burnish all that as soon as I find my tool, <clears throat> which I don't see. And you should be able to burnish out any wrinkles. Now we're going to do the other side. Okay, we're going up against that hinge as close as we can. Okay, so this does two things. One, it prevents any cracking and allows you to open and close this book hundreds and thousands of times without worrying about it coming apart. That's a weak point in the in the book, These the hinge and the spine. Um, and then the other thing it does is it further cements the hinge mechanism to the book. So in the past when I hadn't done this and I hadn't used these wings, I had actually had my entire hinge system fall out that's where all the weight is. So that's why it's important to reinforce that and make sure it's actually attached to the, the front and back cover so that it's carrying some of the load. Okay, so there we go. We're making progress. Okay. Now you can cover this um, and I would recommend trim to fit instead of going over the black, just go right inside and that way everything is on the same plane. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It depends on what I'm doing on the covers. If I'm going to do a pocket, I want all this to be on the same plane so that when I'm putting something in the pocket, it doesn't hit this or find this void in, um, in the back cover. So the way to trim this to fit, let me find a piece of paper. Uh, there we go. Is you would lay it in and then you're going to mark it here on the top, then slide it up and do the same thing and then mark it on the bottom. Line these up in your trimmer. Which may or may not be on a perfect 90 degree, depending on you know how well you put your, your front cover on. So that's why you want to mark it based on what's really happening. And I can see here, that's definitely not on the right angle. Oops. <clears throat> but again, the goal is just to get all of this on the same plane. Okay, I'm going to glue that down and I'm going to repeat the process over here. And that is it for the cover. So I'm going to take a break, and then when I come back, we're going to build the pages. Okay, now we're going to make the pocket page. Um, something, I don't know how I came upon this. I may have seen it somewhere, um, but it dawned on me one day when I was making my pocket pages that when you score the paper, it actually takes up part of the width of the paper. Um, that's just the nature of the score line. So I was cutting, trimming my paper... Um, to size and then scoring it and then I, I found that I kept having variations in the width. Um, so here's what I've done to, to, um, to minimize that. So this paper has been trimmed down to six inches wide which is the, the height of the pocket page. And we need a half inch 
um, hinge to it to actually make the pocket page. So on both of these, I've scored it a half inch. Okay, let's go ahead and press it into place. So obviously this is much too long. So to make a pocket page, you need a six inch by six and a half, six by six and a half. There's the half inch. Once you fold it under, it winds up being a six by six. So what I've started doing is I will trim to the height, which is six inches, so that won't vary. Nothing's happening. I'm not adding a score line. And then I score it, then I place it back in my trimmer and come out at six inches and my pocket pages come out perfect. And the closer you are and the more perfect your pocket page is, everything you add on top of it just goes that much more smoothly. So I highly recommend this method. I'm gonna go trim these both down to six inches across, but ultimately it's six and a half inches, but I've already folded my gusset. And I don't wanna unfold it and cut it at six. I wanna fold it and then cut it at six. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Now we've got our six and a half by six. We've got two of them. We're going to add tape here. And this is the construction, no matter what size pockets you have, or I mean uh, pocket pages you have. Okay, now to make this pocket page, you're going to need to have it set like this. So they're gonna go together like this. Now some people put a half inch on either side and then a flat panel on top. I like this better, but it's really um, just a preference. So I'm going to test it, it looks good. I'm gonna burnish these into place real quick. And remember, they're gonna go on opposite ends. I'm gonna turn my tape down. I'm gonna play, I use the corner as a pivot point until I get it straight. I'm gonna slide this down right where it needs to be. Pull it out like a zipper. There you go. Now we're gonna repeat that process, only we don't have to worry about aligning it. It really just needs to fall down gracefully and the tape will grab. Now I like to press it into place like this so that my pocket um, isn't too bubbled when I'm done. So this is pretty flat. I'm gonna burnish that. And there's my six by six pocket page. Okay, that's it. Um, at the very end, I will show you how to add these uh, to, well actually, let me pull in, let me pull one in. What did I do with my book? I made it and don't know what I, where I said it. <laughs> oh, it's inside the tent, that's why. Okay, so the, I'm not gonna install these because I like to decorate the pages before I install them. But if you need to see how to do it, just as it's continuous, and I'll show you how to do this after they're decorated too, but the pocket slides over the hinge And it should be snug fit because you really don't want your pockets floating around. Okay, slides in like that. And that's how it's attached to the book. Now I take my pick tool and I remove the tape on one side and then come around to the other side and remove it. But I'm not going to install them right now. I just wanted to show you uh, as a reference how that's going to work. Okay, so that's it. Thanks, everybody.